my name is Idessa Tony, and you're watching Seniors with a Purpose. Today's video is appropriately titled, Great Perspectives Regarding the Beauty of Silence and Solitude. We reside in a world of sirens and loud blasting music with continuing gunshots that reverberate throughout many neighborhoods around this country. Noise is not bothersome to some in America, but may be viewed differently in other cultures around the world. Americans seem to welcome as much commotion as possible because it is intentional distraction to them. Some individuals seemingly require a constant barrage of endless clamor. Evidence of this is seen as we observe joggers, walkers, and hikers wear earbuds to drown out outside noises. Nevertheless, the earbuds still allow for inundation of the noise of music, podcasts, and other audible interests. Some people are incessant TV watchers, not for any particular programming, but merely for the sake of background noise. And if asked to refrain from talking for only a few hours, I stand corrected, for a few minutes only, you would have an offended person on your hands with which to deal. In short, there is an acronym for what I have been describing. It is FOMO, the fear of missing out. It is an emotional response to the belief that other people are living better, more satisfying lives or that important opportunities are being missed. FOMO often leads to feelings of unease, dissatisfaction, depression, and stress. Americans are adept at using external stimuli, as in the examples I have given, to distract themselves from internal thoughts and emotions they choose to keep hidden from view. It is difficult to speak of silence and solitude as separate disciplines. However, we will endeavor to try because the significance of each is profound as they relate to our spiritual growth and sense of self-reflection. Let's begin with silence. It is the absence of ambient audible sounds. Clinical health psychologist Amy Sullivan offers reasons why silence is important. She informs, and I quote, silence offers opportunities for that self-reflection and daydreaming, which activates multiple parts of the brain. It gives us time to turn down the inner noise and increase awareness of what matters most. And it cultivates mindfulness recognition, and appreciation of the present moment, unquote. Silence is welcomed by those who value times to simply sit still in contemplative thought. Dr. Sullivan also says we can use calm, quiet moments to tap into a different part of the nervous system that helps shut down our body's physical response to stress. In other words, sitting still and being silent can decrease your blood pressure, slow your heart rate, stabilize your breathing, take the edge off muscle tension, and improve your awareness. Now, what do the scriptures say about silence? It is important that we know because the word of God is true. As we trust and depend on him, we will always be guided toward a right path. The scriptures I will share are not taken out of context. Each reveals what God says about silence. Exodus 14, 14 says the Lord shall fight for you if you just keep silent. Most of the time, we pray to ask for his help in situations, but never wait for him to fight our battles. We go before him. What we need to do is practice silence and watch what he does in our lives. A portion of Ecclesiastes 3, 7 says there is a time to keep silence and a time to speak. In this excellent scripture, there's a lesson to be learned about communication skills. Most of us have need to get our point across in an attempt to be heard. God is clearly saying, there's a time to do that, but there's also a time to listen. When we're silent, we can hear, but not necessarily with physical ears. We cannot hear if we're talking and should be listening. In silence, our spiritual ears are open to hear what God chooses to reveal at that most important moment. 
The last scripture I will share concerning silence is the most profound one. Proverbs 17, 28 tells us, Even a fool, when he holds his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Simply stated, if a fool who keeps silent will be perceived as wise when he's not talking, people may think he's intelligent. So why is silence important to God? Because it is at this time we are very receptive to the Holy Spirit. In silence, prayers are often answered. He will show us what path to take. Last but certainly not least in this presentation, we will discuss the discipline of solitude. Solitude is the state or situation of being alone. Quietness and solitude are synonymous. When you embrace one, the other is unconsciously welcomed. Solitude is a discipline practiced to escape the deafening influences of the $412 billion advertising industry from television, radio, and computer ads, encouraging what we should purchase, what we should watch, and where we should go. The money that is being spent is subtly shaping our views, passions, and financial decisions. Let's not forget all the ads that have divided this country pertaining to political views. The purpose of it all is to dictate how we should feel, who they propose we should follow, and even what they try coercing us to believe. For this reason, we should spend time in God's Word, listening to the direction in which the Holy Spirit would have us go. If not, the messages we are being inundated with from ad companies can be overwhelming and confusing. To circumvent it all, we need to have the courage of our own convictions based upon God's word. When we practice solitude, there is an intentional withdrawing from contact with others for as long as God has you in this posture. For your edification and learning, please read the entire book of Mark to see what happened when Jesus went into solitude. In verses 9 through 13, after Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, he immediately came up out of the water and saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descended upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered unto him. In other words, served him. During this time in solitude in the wilderness, he was tempted by Satan. And he faced all those dangers we just talked about. But specifically, the angels serving him was the most important that we should be aware of. He took authority over Satan's three temptations by refusing each. One last incident where Jesus went into solitude is still in Mark verses 14 through 34. He preached to the people, healed diseases, and cast out many devils. But in verse 35, he rose up early, uh, a great while before day, and he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Since Jesus practiced solitude and prayed, that lets me know how important being alone with God is. The remaining verses after verse 35 informs that the disciples were alarmed when they were unable to find him that morning. Jesus simply needed to get away for a moment from the disciples, from the crowds, to commune with God. After he had done so, he continued to other towns ministering to the people. An on-time word to us about silence and solitude is found in Matthew 6.6. 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. In this verse, I hear the Lord saying, When you pray, go somewhere alone, and when you shut the door behind you, pray to the Father in secret, letting no one else know what your petitions are to him. And when you do that, our Father who knows everything about us anyways, even the condition of our hearts, will reward you openly for your faithfulness and obedience. 
As we conclude this video, allow me to share what author Joshua Becker of the Wall Street Journal wrote. And I quote, If you are spiritual, certainly use this time of solitude to connect with God. And if you are not spiritual, solitude may just put you more in touch with God if you're open to it. Because God opens uh, often speaks with a small voice that is drowned out by the world's noise. We can't hear it until we intentionally listen for it, unquote. It is my sincere prayer that you have enjoyed this video. It was presented to encourage you to shut out the world sometimes, even allowing your voice to be diminished for self-reflection and spiritual growth. This conversation is continued at SeniorsWithAPurpose.com. Remember to subscribe, hit the like button, and until next week, be blessed.